thingy bob uh, the handle for the, uh, for the seat to move it forward or backwards the only place I can put it so it's out of the way of anyone who steps into the passenger seat so it faces forward and reflects the sound off the dashboard uh, I can tilt it up as well and um, and it stays there for quite a while. Uh, it's not just on cable ties. It's a it's a good way of fastening them without leaving any marks. You know, no drilling or uh, into the, anything. It uh, makes your dashboard look tatty anyway. Back to you there. Um, I didn't mention the name, but I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> uh, name is Richard once again from G1Z. G1 Z G Z mobile. Uh, well, we can't sort of tinker with the radios uh, anymore because there's no valves in them. Uh, it's sort of uh, a 2 and 70 with all run. It's, uh, you know, as I've been, that actually, the one was rattling the radio, I took it back off and sort of fell out, it didn't seem to make any difference. It looks a bit like a resistor, but I'm not sure. But it's nice to mess about with the audio and aerial. You know, you've still got a bit of a free hand with that. A few friends who uh, plumped it into the speaker system in the car. It sounded a bit weird. So, what was that last question? I've got a few friends who have plumped it into the. Uh, speaker system in the car, you know, that sounded a bit strange. Oh yeah, you'd have to intercept the speaker wiring and switch it over manually. Or put a relay in line and uh, switch the, uh, re when the rig's switched on it, to activate the relay to switch your uh, car speakers off the car radio. But you have to have a fairly old car that can get out their wiring quite easily. Not like these modern cars where it's all tucked away. Uh, with factory fitted uh, radios as well, which doesn't help. Uh, although I haven't said I've taken the factory fitted one out and put a. Um, I just put one with DAB capability in. I know it's a bit dated this one now because it doesn't decode DAB plus transmissions. That's the only reason I took it out as well as the fact these Persians have a, an economy mode it uh, switches on. So uh, after about five or ten minutes, I have to stop in the engine. So if I listen to the radio, it detects a slight voltage drop. Like drain, all oh, right. I set everything off and the signals are ready to switch yourself off over the uh, CAN bus. Ah, so there you go. Uh, that's why I put a third party one, but I'm just gonna have to remember to switch it off if it's uh, on low volume or no volume when I get out of the car, or else uh, it does take about the battery over up, which doesn't do the uh, longevity of the battery much good. It becomes shorter, but not. <laughs> yeah, I'll just replace the battery as well, cost a hundred quid. Uh, last one, the uh, car battery only lasted uh, three years and, uh, well, two weeks, I think. Last Saturday I got it replaced after I couldn't start the engine in the morning. What I'd done is fill up with fuel and I had a three mile journey back and uh, obviously wasn't enough time to get the charge into the battery, got a bit high resistance, so it just takes longer to get the charge back in. And uh, yeah, the guy put, uh, half has put the battery analyzer on and uh, I had to switch my beam lamps on and uh, the heater fan as well and you know, I put the battery under load while the engine's ticking over and I switch them off and, uh, and uh, yeah he said it's about uh, half way down capacity wise and I thought yeah that makes sense because uh, yeah the engine basically is fairly light off its uh, yeah off, off the start from in the morning on the cold start so I knew, I knew I had a suspicion that the alternator wasn't getting much charge on the battery I was getting a good MPG return, uh, about 2 to 3 MPG higher than I usually get. So yeah, um, <laughs> so yeah, it was charging the battery, but the battery just took longer to charge. And uh, the short journey, after one turn over the engine, and leaving it to, uh, you know, in the driveway for a whole day without using it, and coming back the next day after, um, yeah, gave me the result. I turned the ignition on, and uh, you hear his relay clunk out to, uh, after switch ignition on and uh, well I'm sending it trying to start the motor off with a clunk and it's just over current of protection circuit by the sounds uh, so there's obviously not enough uh, not enough current to actually uh, make it turn over you know without uh, sinking the battery away 
you know, the voltage, should I say, so there's not enough power coming out of it. Anyway, I'm sure I'm boring all these details there, Roy. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny how it takes you by surprise. But you, you make hay while the sun shines and make most of the fact that you're getting better, better economy on the engine in the meantime, until you're reminded of the fact of why you are back <laughs> here. M6CQ, or because of ill health, uh, I have to send my life back through to the end of that. Uh, really messy as well. But Linda still drives my wife in this year. The car last week was a week ago. It's funny how you lose interest when you can't drive it. And she's had the Nissan Milk. She had that car last time. And uh, she, she absolutely hates the uh, steady system. And she said it's now it's weird. And uh, you've got to go into a you can't just adjust the uh, sort of base or whatever, you've got to go into a memory system. And uh, it's one of these with this stop, when you stop, the engine stops. And uh, guess what it is? You know, if you keep going, going to the key to start it again. I, I mean, that, that must really happen, the battery, that surely.